Welcome to the Bike Talk with Dave podcast. I'm your host, Dave Mabel. Thanks for tuning in. This week, our guest comes to us from Kim Hopkins. She is the founder and designer of the women's clothing company, Velarosa. And if you are looking for beautiful, high performance, and great fitting women's cycling clothing, look no further. And I can attest to that. My wife, Dee, who probably rides 8,000 miles a year, loves her Velarosa gear. And we have watched Kim and her now partner, Lisa Carpinelli, take this little company from a small group of passionate women cyclists to beautiful new kits sold at REI, Shields, at Title IX, as well as a variety of bike shops around the country. You should check them out at VelarosaCycling.com. Now back to our guest, Sherry Ott. Sherry is now on a journey around the country, which began 40 years ago when her dad, Lee Ott, started a project of walking from one state capital to the next, connecting all of the lower 48 state capitals in one huge 12,000 mile or so counterclockwise ring. His journey took him to 23 of the 51 capitals, state houses, state houses, and legislative halls. And yes, those are all different words meaning the same thing. It's amazing what you can learn digging around on the internet. Anyway, Sherry's dad essentially aged out of his project, and after some time and life circumstances, Sherry picked up the baton and decided to continue his journey. So now you know the background, and let's get the rest from this week's guest, Sherry Ott. Sherry Ott, what a pleasure to have you on Bike Talk with Dave. Uh, Thanks for coming on, and it's great to meet you face to face here. Thanks so much for having me. This is really exciting to get to talk to you. Um, Well, it is my pleasure, and gosh, uh, we were introduced by Kim Hopkins, uh, Vela Rosa, and uh, she said, told me about your project, and I thought, oh, that's cool, yeah, I'd love to have her on, and as I dug in, like, gosh, you've done so much. You have, <laughs> you have like a, I don't know, travel blog yeah. from all your worldwide travels. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Sherry Ott, <laughs> who are you? How did you get started? I do kind of want to go back because I feel like your origin story is is interesting. And yeah, it's um, different. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, most people don't do what you did when you were what thirty six or seven years old. Thirty six is when I left. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, that's kind of crazy. I, tell us what you did, and then yeah, back how and then why. it was crazy. Back then it was crazy. I don't think it's as crazy now, which actually makes me feel really good. So, because I think it's becoming slightly more, mm, not really mainstream, but a little bit more out there where more people are traveling and doing this. But um, yeah, so I'll back up uh, and I'll try to kind of go through that timeline fast because it is a lot. I'm 54, so I have a lot of years. (laughs) Uh, But I mean, I had a corporate career in IT um, as soon as I went to University of Nebraska. I had a corporate career in, career in IT, and I specialized in like retail stuff and kind of moved all over and lived all over the U.S. Um, working for large corporations. Uh, at that time, I guess I'll give this background, I was a, a runner, a marathoner, basically, oh. when I was younger. Um, so I've always been active, I guess, and I always like challenges, which I think is important. Uh, and I was living in New York city, working for coach and I was 36 years old and I decided that I didn't really like it. And that I, I didn't want to wait until I retired to do a bunch of stuff that I wanted to do now while I was fit and active and so on. And I decided to quit my job just kind of not really out of the blue. I had actually planned it for two years, but I just decided I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go travel around the world for a year and do all these things that I want to do. And then I'll come back and figure out life. That was the plan. (laughs) That's really brave, whether then or now, like to like, yeah, I mean, 
step I wasn't out the a, door and not yes. have another door with a paycheck on the other end of it uh, to walk into must have been almost terrifying. It was terrifying. I mean, honestly, it was like that terrifying and exciting at the same time. But I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I cried so much when I was leaving, like, just because I was scared. It was, I was scared. I was excited. I didn't really know what I was doing. I wasn't someone who grew up as an avid traveler. I mean, my parents and I, I grew up in the Midwest and, um, you know, we would take driving trips everywhere, but I didn't even have a passport until I was 30. So it's not like I was an exchange student and I was used to this. I had been to a couple of countries and I just decided that I wanted to see more of the world. And um, I had an interest in photography at that time. And so I kind of wanted to do some of that. And, and so because um, I, I had been planning this for a couple of years before I quit my job, I took photography classes and, and so on. And at that time, so, you know, I think 2005, 2006, I went out and I'm like, you know, I'm going to do a website. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing. So I basically, I wanted just basically a journal where I could keep notes and put my pictures and have a, pl have a place where my parents, where my friends could kind of see what I was doing. And that was it. Um, at that time, maybe the word blog was around, but it wasn't in our vocabulary, really. Mm -hmm. Like, so I just said, I have this little web journal. Um, and uh, someone, one of my consultants that worked for me, got me a going away present, which was a URL. Uh, and he decided what it was, which was otsworld.com. He set it up for me. And, you know, I had a website called <laughs> otsworld.com. That's awesome. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I had to come up with my website name, it would have taken me, it, it would have been excruciating. I never would have come up with something as good. And it would have taken way too long. So, so I didn't really, I mean, even though I was in IT, I knew a lot about um, point of sale systems mm -hmm. and customer service stuff, but I didn't know anything about websites really. Yeah. And so, you know, that was a whole new thing to me. And so as I traveled that first year, I went to like 23 countries by myself, um, did all kinds of stuff. I climbed Kilimanjaro. I, I mean, I was all over um, and doing a lot of active stuff. I still tried to run. Um, did you, do any, I, did you do any marathons while you were out? No, no, huh. I didn't stay in that good a training, but okay. I did. I would, I would just keep up like three to five miles or yeah. something like yeah. that. I didn't know if like you hit Berlin marathon and London marathon, no Sydney marathon <laughs> or anything like that. Nope. I was just there to like have fun and learn and take pictures. And, and that's what I did. And I wrote about it. I wrote about everything. I'd go to internet cafes and write about it. And Somewhere about three months in, um, two things happened, which was one, I decided I don't ever want to go back. <laughs> wow. That <laughs> um, I wanted to stay on the road somehow. I loved it. And the second thing that happened is I had a comment from someone on my little website journal, whatever. Um, and it was from someone I didn't know. It was from some woman in Brazil that was asking me about my cat that I had written about that I had left. And it was that I bring that up because it was that moment where I'm like, oh my God, other people are reading this? Like how? I didn't even, like it didn't even dawn on me that that would be something that would happen. So I'll fast forward. Um, I did figure out a way to stay on the road and not ever go home. Um, I mean, I went home, but I, after I actually was out for 16 months, I um, went home for like three months, I think, back to New York. I sold everything I owned then because I had been subletting my apartment. I got rid of everything and I put a few little things in storage and I left again. And I went and I lived in Vietnam for a year and taught English because that's what you did back at that time if you wanted to like live somewhere else, you know. Um, so it was a big change going from big corporate job to teaching yeah, English from in coach. Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, to teaching Talk English about, in Vietnam. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was making like at that time $14 an hour. It was wow. crazy, um, which was a ton in Vietnam at that time. So I, I lived the really good life. But and then after that, uh, boy, then it was basically 11 years of being on the road and nomadic constant. 
like I had my storage unit back in New York and I would come back to the States occasionally. I, I started a few different little businesses, online businesses, but the main thing was always my blog. And so I wrote about all of this. And after I kind of hit a lot of the main stuff I wanted to do, like, you know, see Paris, see, you know, all the bucket listy stuff kind of, I was bored. You do get bored of that actually. And I was really, really interested in the unusual places and unusual, like, active ways to do it. So I ended up like walking the Camino de Santiago in Spain, which is like a 500 mile walk across Spain. I did the Mongol rally, which is um, you buy a inappropriate little car in London and you drive it all the way to Mongolia without support. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Over the course, it was like 9,000 miles and I don't know, it was five weeks or something. And then you donate the car when you get there if you get there, about 50% of the teams actually made it. And then I did a rickshaw race in India with another woman where me and another woman like drove a rickshaw across like 2000 miles across India by ourselves. It was so I like challenges and I like journeys. Um, I guess that's why I bring that up. I did a whole bunch of other traditional travel. I've been to Antarctica a couple of the times, like my blog, my travel blog took me everywhere still does quite frankly. Um, and that is what my career turned into, a travel blogger. And then that kind of morphed into, remember, you know, influencer, content creator, all this, you know. So I've been through that whole transition over the course of 18 years in this, which is just crazy. So that's my background. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're 54 and yeah. an influencer and yes. a content creator. Isn't that reserved for like 22 year olds or 18 year olds oh or something? I, I know. I know. <laughs> you give us all um, hope. You give all the uh, gray hair guys out here hope. Oh, I yeah. can be an influencer now. <laughs> Luckily, some people want to see 54 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, it is different though. But, you know, I think one of the reasons why it worked for me is because I came at it when it was new and I was, you know, I was. I was in the original group of people who started kind of coming up through this and travel. And I had a really strong business background. I knew how to work with businesses and big corporations and budgets, and I could pitch myself and stuff like that. So, and I had a nest egg because I had 14 mm -hmm. years of working in corporate. Right. So very different than a 24 year old starting that. Um, so that's, I, I attribute that to, to a lot of what made me successful and made me able to do this probably. So a 9,000 mile uh, <laughs> weird car rally from yeah. London to, where'd you say? Uh, Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Mongolia. And a 2,000 mile rickshaw race. How many books have you written? Like those are each a book, aren't they? Yeah. The whole thing is a book. None. Zero. It's horrible. I know. Well, it's all just, on your blog, right? Yeah, it is on my blog. Actually. I mean, there's, you know, like close to 2000 articles on that blog. Um, oh, wow. But I, you know, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to write a book. It's just that I've never slowed down enough to have time. I was just going to say you're too busy wandering earth to I love it. I love being in it to sit down and write. Although yeah. there's got to be time on airplanes where you can scribble <laughs> notes and <laughs> but yes, there are a lot of books in me. <laughs> um, okay, so there's another one that's yeah. currently being written mm -hmm. um, figuratively and that is the journey you're continuing from your dad which I think is super cool tell us about capital to capital and I want to tell everyone and of course I had to look it up capital with an O Ooh, everyone learns this well I, I mean we have we learned it in fifth grade and then we learned it again in ninth grade and then we learned it again in twelfth grade and then we learned it again in college writing and then we have to learn it again as a 54 and 59 year old, right? I had to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, it's capital with an O and it's mm -hmm. the place you visit. It is not yep. what you use to start a business. Yes. So exactly. Um, and capital with an O refers to the actual building. Whereas even like capital with an A, you refer to that as like the capital city. Seriously. Yeah. Aren't they the same thing? Okay, we're not going to talk grammatic here, but um, I find that odd. Yeah. 
So yeah. Des Moines is the capital city with an A, and you go to the capital. Which was an O. With an O. Huh. Mm -hmm. I, it seems like that would be the same word, but what? I don't know. Must not be. <laughs> anyway, so you have capital to capital. What yes, is that and where did it come from? Okay. So this actually is a good continuation of where I just stopped, which is 11 years of being a nomad. I settled down in Denver. I'm still a travel blogger. And then, and I'm still traveling probably 80% of the time. And then the pandemic comes. Um, and I couldn't travel and I couldn't do the type of work that I normally do, uh, which in some ways was really nice for me. I needed a break. I really needed a break. I was so happy at that point. I did have a home, which was really great too. And what happened is I started biking. I had never biked before <laughs> because for me, that was the way that I could get out and explore and like travel. Um, during the pandemic and see new things and experience new things. And, you know, it just, and it was because even though I had lived in Denver for probably two, three years up to that point, um, I was rarely here. So I didn't really know Denver. I didn't even have a car because I didn't need one here. Huh. Um, and so I got on my crappy little bike that I had bought off of Facebook Marketplace and I started biking with my friend who I had also kind of quarantined with. We were both living alone. And so we kind of just banded together and her and I would ride. We, we kind of like started learning the Denver trails and we'd start connecting them and putting them together. And, and we ended up like, we were like riding more and more and we both had these crappy bikes. She had a cruiser and we were riding like 40 miles on these bikes wow. the first year in 2020. And I really loved it. And I decided the second year in 2021 that I would um, get a proper bike. <laughs> so I went into the bike store in 20, in March of 2021 and I had heard about these gravel bikes and I'm like, what's a gravel bike? I knew nothing about biking really. I just liked to bike. And, um, and, you know, so we talked about it and I'm like, well, my budget's around 800 bucks or some 900 bucks or something. <laughs> Cause I didn't want to spend too much. And, uh, and, we talked about it and I'm like, okay, so that all sounds great. How do I get one? He's like, oh, you can't get a bike until like July. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I, I need to leave with a bike today. <laughs> and he's like, well, if you need to leave with a bike today, then you have to look at this one, which was a track checkpoint. Hmm. And they happened to have it in my size. We basically looked for something that would fit me. And I walked out of there with the Trek checkpoint gravel bike, which was like three or four times what I wanted to spend, right? But I walked out with a bike. And then that was a big turning point because then that took it up to a whole nother level. I had a proper bike. Mm -hmm. And um, wow, that do, changed a lot. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> your first ride on that thing? I remember my test ride from the store completely. And it, yes, uh, because it was so different because it was the drop handlebars that I had never had before. And it was just like, you know, it was a whole different kind of thing that you had to get used to the turning every little movement of your body kind of thing where I'm like, Oh, um, but I also immediately knew that that was the position my body needed to be in to get power. Hmm. And, and that was where I was maxing out my old crappy little commuter bike. Huh. So, so it felt good from the moment I got in it basically. Um, still very much a beginner. I mean, I still don't know that much about it, but I, so anyway, I, I got that bike, started biking more. And, um, so, so that happened. And then the other piece, my dad's project. So now we have to back up to when I was 14 years old. So 1984, my dad decided he was going to start walking from capital to capital in the United States. And I, I, don't even know what to say about that because like he wasn't a walker. He just decided he was going to do this. He, he was an engineer for Caterpillar and he liked his garden. And so it was just a really weird thing. But the one thing that was consistent was my dad was always a little weird. He loved to do things that were really unique. Like he didn't want to be like anyone else. He never has wanted to be like anyone else. He's very much an individual and he always wanted to like be different. Hmm. So at that time, when I was 14, I didn't really understand that too much. I just thought he was infuriating and embarrassing. Um, you were embarrassed so, by that. I find that interesting. Oh, 
terribly embarrassed. I mean, I was a 14 year old teenage girl. Like, <laughs> and your yeah. dad walking from capital to capital wasn't cool. No, huh. <laughs> this was before Forrest Gump. This was. This was just, I wanted my dad to be like every other dad. Like I wanted to live in a subdivision and watch MTV and he wouldn't get us cable. And like, you know, like it just, yeah, no, huh. I didn't like it at all. I hated huh. it. I didn't tell anyone about it. Um, you know, your goal at that point when you're that age is to just fit in. Right. That's it. Right. And so Anyway, and it, so he started and he started on Springfield, Springfield, Illinois, because I was growing up in Illinois. So he walked from Springfield to Madison, Wisconsin. Now, he didn't do that all at once. He had a full time job. So he would go for like a weekend or um, on his vacations, he would take time and, you know, with his vacation days. And then, of course, he needed help. So my mother, um, who is so incredibly dedicated to him was his logistics person and she would drive him and drop him off and pick him up and get the hotel and you know like all of she was the logistics person um and what that meant was i either got drug along on these things which i, I, I was going to ask if you went along or if it was like or they'd leave me alone and then i'd just cause trouble as a teenager i, I was going to say that's dangerous right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so more more often than not, they took me and I was drug along to these places and I could have cared less. And you Are know, you just hanging like, out in the car with your mom. Um, yeah. I mean, like what we, we'd, uh, go, I'd try to convince her if we were by a big enough city, which wasn't that often, that was really only the capital cities, um, to like go to the mall or something like that. We'd go mm -hmm. shopping or, you know, or we'd try to find something to do, but yeah, it was a so lot. So you of wouldn't, you wouldn't like follow your dad. He no, would just huh. be out walking, he'd drop him off, he'd mm -hmm. be out walking, and mm -hmm. then you'd pick him up and yes. spend the night. So, he'd either, you'd either go back home or stay in a hotel and he'd walk. It was a hotel day. most of the time yeah. because, yeah, because we were far away from home. But um, yeah, that's how it worked. My mom and I would go get a hotel and get that, you know, and then pick him up and go to dinner somewhere. And yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, this was before cell phones. It was before... Google Maps. So everything was paper. He had paper maps. My mother had to kind of try to follow him on that. They had no way to communicate. They had to be where they said they were going to be. Um, we lost him a number of times. Oh, wow. Because, yeah. And, and there were like things that I remember from my childhood was like losing him. We couldn't find him where he wasn't where he was supposed to be. We went out and, you know, tried to find him on these roads, couldn't find him. And like called the police. The police are out looking for him. My mother's crying. I'm like terrified because my parents are crying. You know, like I just, you know, not really great memories as a kid. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, I know you were embarrassed by his whole project, but mm -hmm. did you have fun on like the weekends or the weeks that you would bop around in the car with mom chasing dad yeah. or? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. fine. And certainly like when I got to go to, you know, cities like Nashville or something like that, you know, it was fun for me. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it took me places, that's for sure. But it was, it was also the majority of this, and I, I'm experiencing this now as I'm doing it, is rural. I mean, it's really 85% rural America, um, which I love now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, he, he worked on this in his spare time on his vacation days. You know, I went off to college. He continued working on it. My mother diligently was his logistics person. And he probably, he was 47 when he started it. I think he walked, uh, he was still walking until he was about mm, seven, mid seventies, I think was when he maybe did his last little section and he would start multiple ones at the same time. So, um, because walking is pretty slow. So, right. You know, it was kind of dependent on like where they might be vacationing and then he'd take three days and walk out of that capital and then he'd pick a landmark and, you know, he took meticulous notes on it all. And, you know, he might not get back to that part of the country again for five years, but if he did, when he did, he'd make sure he'd go there and walk another few days and start where he left off kind of thing. So he finished in the end of all this, he finished 23 capital routes and walked a over somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 miles, we'll say. Um, you know, it's hard to say because once again, it was all paper. Right. And he was, 
he would generally lots of times take off and go through fields, follow railroad lines, that kind of stuff. Cause he could do that. Um, yeah. And he, like I said, he took notes that they did that for such a long time and then it kind of fizzled out. They well, were, I get you know, that if you're, if you're in your <laughs> mid seventies and yeah, they had grandchildren. My mom, I think was really tired of it. After yeah, a while. for sure. I can yeah. totally imagine <laughs> that for sure. So everything kind of got put up in the attic and left. And uh, so now fast forward into my years Your of new travel. resurrection as a cyclist in 2020, yeah. <laughs> 2021. And, and actually even back up a little bit into, I told you I walked the Camino de Santiago mm -hmm. and I did that and I'll, it was kind of at that moment. I still remember it pretty well. Um, I was walking through the Meseta which, and I was alone, you know, uh, which the Meseta is kind of like the Midwest of Spain, of Northern Spain. It's a lot of fields. People don't like it because it's flat and the towns are further apart, but I'm like, I love this. I'm going to walk through it. This is like where I grew up. Anyway, it was spring and there was a farmer tilling the fields and I smelled the fresh tilled dirt and it just brought back all these crazy childhood memories to me. And it was at that moment where I'm like, oh my God, when did I become my dad? I am walking across Spain. Like that, it just didn't even occur to me until then that like, wow, I, how did that happen? <laughs> and, you know, as I've thought about it and thought about it, you know, he, I am really more like my dad. All these crazy things that I did in, to be different, to have big journeys, to challenge myself, like, I got that from him. I didn't get that from my mom. Um, and so that was a really weird, sobering moment. So that kind of coupled with, as I got older, I had a ton of respect for the Capital of the Capital Project because that was right up my alley. And the coolest thing to me about it was no one has done it. Walk, walked from Capital to Capital. Like huh. he came up with an idea that was so unique that no one else has done. And I have huge respect for that, especially in my world of like, oh, how you always have to try to figure out how do you stand out? How do you do something different, et cetera? And I'm like, wow, that's, that's really cool. So as I got older and the more and more I traveled and so on, the more respect I had for it. And the more I was kind of bummed out that it never got finished, hmm. especially since he was, you know, a guy who was like, finish what you start. Like that's what he taught us. And so 2021, I've got the good bike and I'm just kind of thinking about like, I don't know what's happening with the world yet. It wasn't really clear what was going to happen. And I was kind of floundering anyway, cause I didn't have any big, like I love projects. I like journeys. Mm -hmm. I like a big thing to kind of anchor around. And I had finished all of mine and I hadn't had anything for a while. And I just decided, you know, I'd looked before at potentially finishing it walking, but there's 9,000 miles left and I don't like walking that much. <laughs> well, you were a runner or yeah. are a runner. I don't know if you still run, or, but no, I mean, my knees you can run, run the dang thing. <laughs> no, but, and I'm like, but I love biking and why don't I finish it on bike? And so I... I went up to South Dakota where my parents live now, where they're retired. They bought, they are both still alive. They're 87 years old. They and... retired in South Dakota. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't grow up there. We have no ties there, but kind oh. of tells you the type of people they are though. Like yep. they just, they like the rural areas. They grew up in Nebraska on farms. And, uh, okay. So, cool. Yeah. Yep. yep. So kind of the same culture for yep. the most part. Um, so I went up there and I talked to my dad and I asked if I could kind of take it over and take it from him and went up to the attic and kind of figured out where he was at and got all of his old binders out and notes and, and the old map that we had, which was this, you know, just a map of the United States that had literal push pins and yarn, you know, connecting everything uh, that I remember in our house from when I was a teenager. And I, started it <laughs> that's that's so, awesome so yeah and i i'm using his original plan 
so he had determined um, that he ha- he determined how to connect to all the capitals. So it's he had always said he was going to do the lower 48. He was going to walk to the lower 48 plus DC, so 49 capitals. So that meant that I would have 26 to complete, and those 26 roughly total around 9,000 miles um, because all of the West is left, and it's big distances in the West. It's big distances. He did much most just pretty much all of the midwest he did do a lot of a good amount of the south and a good amount of the east southeast i would say Mm -hmm. um but yeah so i've got some big mileage left and he designed it so that you have to basically walk in or bike in to a capital and then you leave that capital um so they're all connected interconnected in kind of a counterclockwise fashion um, and as you imagine, as you can imagine, you can connect the capitals like that in a billion different ways. For sure. But I'm using the way that he decided to do it. So you're going to ride, finish out his quest of the 26 capitals. Um, and you have to do like ride into a capital. I'm going to use, let's use Des Moines since I live here yep. and here we are. Denver is a capital. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that'd be a long one. That'd be Denver to Des Moines. <laughs> it's got to be something in between there, doesn't it? Kansas, yeah, Nebraska. A couple of things in between there. So his route, just to connect those, his route goes, um, well, we'll start Santa Fe to Denver, mm-hmm. Denver to Cheyenne, Wyoming, Cheyenne to Lincoln, Nebraska, Lincoln to Des Moines. Okay. And then it was, I think, Des Moines down to Missouri um, or, or Kansas. I can't so if now. you get to Des Moines, mm-hmm. you don't have to leave the next day. You no. could come back three years later and do Des Moines to yeah. Missouri. Yeah. What I am trying to do, um, since biking is a little faster, uh, and I have a job that I can be away pretty easily for a number of weeks at a time if I just plan ahead, Um I am trying to do it a route at a time. So my dad would just kind of, you know, however he could do it, but a route at a time was impossible for him because that would take months, uh-huh. you know? Right, right. Um, but for biking, I can get that done normally in a couple of weeks, depending on the distance. And so I am trying to do like one route, uh, you know, Cheyenne to Lincoln, Nebraska and, and get all that done. Um, or a good example of, I just, I finished uh, Helena, Montana last year. So Bismarck, North Dakota to Helena, Montana. And now I do have to bike out of Helena, Montana down to Salt Lake City, but I had already taken plenty of time doing that. I, you know, that was good enough. I finished that one. And now at some point I'll go back to Helena, start from Helena and go down to Salt Lake City. Cool. Yeah. Um, I had two questions and then I want to ask you about where you've been, but your dad had many, um, I don't know, routes started. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you get to start where he ended? Yes. Okay, cool. So, so got dad got a, he got you a yeah. start on some of the. Yes, which is really nice. Yep. Um, out of those uh, 26 that are left, I think it was eight were in progress. So, for example, um, Des Moines actually is a good one. So Lincoln to Des Moines, he had actually walked a number of days of that already. And he was all the way, oh, I can't remember the name of the town that I would have started in, but he was already in to Iowa. He was about 120 or 30 miles from the capital. Atlantic, Cherokee. It was south because it was coming from Lincoln. Yeah. But yeah. So you get to start uh, in that little town and ride yeah, to Des Moines. Well, yes. And because he kept such meticulous notes and he would always pick a um, a really good landmark that would likely be there in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could actually go back to his notes and pinpoint it down to exactly where he stopped. And that's exactly where I go. My brother actually was my logistics person for that route. And we went there and we started where he stopped walking like 20 some years ago and off we went and I finished it in two days. Hmm. Um, and yeah, so that one was nice, but I've 
all last year, the ones that I did were ones that were in progress. So like even the Bismarck to Helena one, he was just over the border in Montana. So I basically had to do everything from Miles City onward. Um, so yeah, but the majority still are going to be the full routes for the most part. Yeah. Well, because only eight were, were started. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, it is fun to go and do that, like to start in the middle, like where he stopped. It's it's just a kind of a cool thought to me. I, I think there. it's super cool. And what a, I don't know, I want to use the word honoring connection. I don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense, but an honoring connection between you and your dad to go yeah. to, and I'm making up the name of a town. I'm not making it up. I'm making up that this is where you went to start in Atlantic, Iowa at the, I don't know what, the World <laughs> War II Memorial, wherever yeah, he so stopped that he yeah. described. And mm -hmm. you're in the exact same spot and you're reading in his notes that, okay, yeah. I stopped in Atlantic, Iowa at the World War II Memorial. And then here you are 30 or 40 years later, starting in the same yeah. spot. Like that's just yeah. gotta be cool. I mean, do, do you and your dad talk about communal places you've been like that? I mean, is there a different connection between you and your dad now? Um, a little, like when it comes to this, we will talk about it. Like we don't talk about maybe the exact spot, but we will talk about like, oh, like Iowa is a good one. Like, dang, Iowa, that part of Iowa, that's hilly, you know? <laughs> right. And so we'll kind of talk about the um, terrain or maybe some of the weird things with the culture or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, I just finished Austin, Texas to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And I haven't talked to him yet because they're on vacation right now. But I'm one of the things I want to talk to him about is, he actually walked from Oklahoma City into Austin, Texas. And I'm like, man, I want to know what he thought of Texas, walking through Texas because biking through Texas was really a challenge for me. Um, so, you know, so we have these things like seeing a, a landscape at a slow speed like that mm -hmm. is really interesting. Um, yet, I bet if we were to, and we should talk about this, we haven't really yet, like how things have changed you know, in those years too, like it's pretty massive. <laughs> Very massive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, then or now, well, actually like I, I want to go, one of the rules, I read your rules on your blog <laughs> are that you have to walk into and around inside the Capitol. Yeah. Did you, do you remember doing that with your dad back in the day? Um, yeah. For the ones that he finished. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yep. I, I, the ones that you were there for. Yeah, the I vaguely remember it. Um, he would always walk in and look around for sure, and we, you know, and by that time I was so over it, and I also could have cared less about the capitals at that age. I was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> can't we just go to eat and go home? Right. Um, but yes, yeah, so now whenever I arrive at a capital, I always take the tour because every capital has a tour. <laughs> um. And it is, as a, as a 54 year old adult, it's absolutely fascinating. Really? <laughs> yes. What, oh, what's, a, what's a memory? What's something that stands out from your oh, capital tours? Many. Um, well, we'll say um, the South Dakota Capitol in Pierre. When I was going through there, uh, they had said that they actually bought their blueprint for the Capitol from montana really and so yeah so it was pretty cool because then when i finished montana i'm like this is the exact same capital it, it you know like just weird little things like that and then i found that that's actually pretty normal lots of places like bought the blueprints from capitals and then um des moines capital was one of my favorite absolute favorite have you taken that tour oh gosh when i was in fourth grade eighth grade 12th grade and I'm sure we went there with our kids. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Do you, do you ever remember going into the law library there? Yeah. With the walls of books with ladders yes. going. It looks like Harry Potter or something. It's like exactly it's just, what it looks like. You're right. It is insane. I walked in there and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So, 
it, and they're like, I think Des Moines is the only one with five domes or something. You know, there's yeah. there's all kinds of really cool stuff. And I one of the things I've already decided, and it might have been when I was in Des Moines hearing their tour or whatever, or walking around, is that our US capitals are very similar to me to like when you go to Europe and you go to cathedrals and like all the famous churches and stuff. You know, like we as Americans, when we travel to Europe, oh, we have to go to all the Duomos and all this stuff and we're amazed at all the, the look. That's our capitals. Huh. Absolutely. And and because there is so much history behind them in the architecture. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff from Europe because like South Dakota and North Dakota and Montana, all those guys, they got like Italian marble makers and sculptors that came in, you know, all these immigrants. So it's it's very European in some ways, too. Um, the North Dakota capital, it has 19 floors. It looks like just a really ugly office building on the outside, but the inside looks like the Empire State Building. It's like all this art deco, and it oh. is the tallest building in all of North Dakota. Really? 19 stories. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> So I don't know. I'm maybe I'm just old, but I the whole thing I find it really kind of interesting, especially when you do them, you know, when you're doing them kind of all at once. Um I don't know. I just find it all pretty fascinating. Well, you're <laughs> you're speaking very animatedly about your visits to these capitals. Like are you like a kid in a candy store when you're talking about your next trip? Ooh. <sighs> That's a hard question because, okay, so now you're talking about the biking of it. Yeah, so the, good point. <laughs> there is there is that. You do have yeah. to earn that tour of the Capitol, yeah. don't you? Yeah. And I mean, for me, still the best part is that last whatever three blocks biking into the Capitol and arriving. And, and for me, like I said, I, and I'll keep reiterating this, like I'm a new biker. I am not... I don't have years under my belt of being comfortable on a bike for long distance bike travel. And one of the things that I'm, this sounds weird, but like every time I arrive there alive in one piece, I'm happy. Like it is probably some of the scariest things that I've done is do this because, you know, I know like the adventure cycling association and so on, they've got routes, you know, across the U S that people follow and, you know, they're just better traveled. Well, I try to utilize those routes whenever I can. And I could between a few, but because I'm doing this capital to capital, I, I can't always. And so that leaves me to doing route planning on myself and on roads that, you know, I, I've had to, I have to replan all the time. Like I get there, I'm on a road or whatever. Iowa was actually a good example. I had it all planned out. I'm like, oh yeah, this shouldn't be a problem. I'll ride on gravel. Um, I did that in South Dakota. It's hard, but I'm like, that's fine. It keeps me off the road, you know, the roads without a shoulder or something. And I got there and you guys are so hilly in that part. It's so <laughs> rolling. And the gravel was so... I don't know, I want to call it mushy or big or whatever. Like it just was not good gravel to be biking on with it. And, and so you could get no speed going down to go up, you know, and it was just, I was struggling really badly and I was walking up hills and I'm like, I can't do this. I've got 60 miles to do today, you know, like, and so I looked and decided to get back on the, one of the main highways, like one of the state roads, whatever and risk it uh because at least i knew i could go faster um so you know so i so it's a lot of that so i'm still not completely comfortable biking on roads like i have to be i i have been i've biked over 2000 miles on roads now <laughs> right but but it still scares me every time and here in denver i can bike 100 miles on trails and never have to get off a trail and so it does spoil me in yeah. that sense yep yep um, no i get that uh, we've got yeah. great trail systems around Des Moines, and yeah. um, I know I rode one in. It was awesome. Yeah, we we have them. <laughs> they go all over the place, and you can kind of go anywhere you want, mostly yeah. on a trail system. So all of us here are like, the only time we'll go on the road is when we're on a group ride. Yeah, 
And, and that's the other thing. I'm out there doing this alone. So yep. it's just like little me out here on a farm road. <laughs> right, right. Cars Without zipping by at 70 miles an hour on a two lane yeah. road with no shoulder. And, yeah. Eastern Texas was probably the worst that I've ever encountered. Really? Um, yeah. And it wasn't, I mean, I'm going to still say 80 to 85% of the drivers were good. They would get over when they could. Um, it was just that for a farm roads, for these, they call them farm to market roads, for these farm roads, it was still tons of traffic. I couldn't believe it. Like, you know, when I'm out in the middle of Iowa on a farm road or South Dakota or wherever, like you get traffic, but it's, you you know, it's not constant. It's it's just different. It's just different. That was the first thing I learned. I'm like, whoa, okay. Texas rural is different than Midwest rural. Um, and so, yeah, it was, so it forced me on to bigger roads with bigger shoulders because it was oh. just so dangerous. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Just, yeah. Well, if you look so, at Eastern Texas, you know, Dallas, Waco, Austin, you went through Waco, Houston, yep. like all of those are huge towns and there's a And I avoid a lot of the big towns, but yeah. it was just, I, where I was surprised was it was the rural areas that were so traveled. Yeah. Like I just couldn't believe it in big, big trucks. Yeah. Huh. So, so yeah, it, it's, it's scary. And then I also have the, <laughs> this is my own issue. My other, for this last route that I just did, uh, dogs oh so many dogs chasing me like and i vacillate between being terrified because some of them are chasing me because they're chasing me and want to attack um and the other ones are chasing me and i'm worried because they're running across lanes of traffic and there's you know and i'm just oh they're just coming so, over to say hi and it's like don't get killed don't get killed yeah. yeah i mean they're coming over to run with me you know and yeah. figure me out but i'm not worried you know for my safety necessarily i'm more worried for theirs but then there are times where i'm definitely worried for my safety with some of the big dogs that just yeah they're yeah. not used to seeing bikers they don't know what a bike is yeah no one bikes those roads so um how far a day do you try to go um, you know, I like to enjoy myself. <laughs> so, um, normally let's say on average 50 miles, actually probably 55 miles on average. So not, it's not crazy. Um, could I do more? Probably. But I also, you know, part of this for me, I'm still a travel blogger. I still like to write about travel. I still like to share it. I still like to really engage in the places that I'm in, whether they're a small town or a big city. And so I enjoy the travel aspect of it too. And I don't want it to just be a grind. Where do you so, stay? How, like, how do you do that? Well, okay. So I stay in hotels so far. I'm, I'm sure that I'll probably bike pack a few. Um, but at this point, as I started out, I didn't want to take that on too. Like I can only take on so much at once. Um, and this is a lot of new stuff for me. Uh, like I haven't traveled with my bike yet either. So far, I've just gone to places that I can kind of drive to in a day or two mm -hmm. um, and take my bike in my car. Uh, so what I do is, you know, my my dad had my mom. Yep. And she was a huge part of this project. I mean, that project never would have happened without her, ever. And, you know, I am I never got married. I don't have kids. So, you know, I'm used to solo traveling all over. And that's great. I love it. But I also get tired of being alone all the time. So one of the challenges for me in this, when I decided to take this on is I'm like, who's going to do my logistics? Who's going to be there? Because I really don't want to be alone. And that's a really hard thing for me, one, to ask for help like that. But um, yeah, so, so far, so I, so I always have one person come with me. They drive my car. Um, I treat them like I get all the hotels and the food. I take care of everything. But uh, so it's actually kind of a fun gig, but I call them my logistics queen <laughs> and they do logistics for me. So they, they will ride anywhere or drive anywhere from, I don't know, seven to 12 to 15 miles ahead. And we'll just meet up and that gets me off the bike and, you know, maybe I refill water or whatever, or at times this last time, uh, there were some really iffy areas and dogs and sometimes they would drive behind me, oh, you know, close great. by, um, 
you know, so, and they, they also were pretty important for like some of the reroutes. So like there was a point where I was in Austin, this great bike city, right. Which I was slightly disappointed in. Um, they have a lot of bike lanes, but then like the bike lane would just end done. And then you're on this like three lane, massive commercial road with like Walmarts and everyone turning in and out. And I'm like, Oh, this is not good anyway. But like, you know, she would go ahead and would see that and be like, okay, text me while I was on the bike and, you know, be like, okay, there's a re let's reroute you here. It's, you know, whatever. Um, so that part's really great. We use Google street view all the time hmm. also to kind of plan stuff. I use Kamut to plan my multi-day trips. Um, and then we kind of, you know, redo them all the time. But, but yeah, so, so I have a logistics queen with me. And for me, that makes it really fun um, you, to just have someone there, like in the evenings and, you know, yeah. You know, know and like this person? Different it's people? a different person every time so far. Every time, so, different person. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so far it has been, uh, the first one was my mother. Oh, which cool. is really cute. Um, it was the short one. So she did that. Uh, and then I've had um, various kind of friends who are retired um, that want to do it. But you have to, I, you know, I guess we started this with, I'm an influencer. Um, right. So, you know, I put this out to people that have followed me for years and years and years. And I was surprised. I guess I shouldn't have been, but I've had so many people that want to be the logistics queen. I can't oh, cool. tell you. Yeah. So um, some people have been strangers, like that I don't really know, but they've followed me for years. Um, so yeah, it's just part of the, I don't know, part of the exploration of it for me is like also getting to know the logistics queen sometimes. I bet. I bet that's yeah. that would be fun. Yeah. And it can also be a guy. It doesn't have to be a woman, but we just, but they're going to be called the queen. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, how many have you done? So I just finished my sixth one. Um, yeah. So you're at and 29 I, total? Yes. 23 so, plus six is 29. Oh, no, I had 26 that I had to do. My dad did 23. And so now I'm down to 20. I have 20 left. That's awesome. And like how many are you trying to hit in a year? Yeah. So I still, you know, I'm still travel blogging and I'm traveling all the time and I run tours and stuff like that too. So um, I can normally fit in three to four routes a year. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm building in right now in between all my other travels. Okay. So I got to go back to this travel blogging thing. <laughs> yeah. This sounds like traveling and you blog yeah. about it. Does this count mm -hmm. for work? Yes. It does. Okay. So what else Absolutely. do you do? Like, it feels like when you say you got to go on, like, going to, I don't know, what's someplace interesting? Where's your next trip? I'm leaving for Tahiti on Tuesday. What are you doing in Tahiti? <laughs> work. <laughs> I, like, what do you mean? Um, I am going on a small ship cruise around the islands and writing about it and also doing a whole bunch of content creation for them. For them? Mm -hmm. For the ship for the company? Com uh, the ship company. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah, so, so they hired me to come out and do that. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm raising my hand <laughs> <laughs> if you need any any help. That's, like, so that's how that works. Like the, the ship yeah. company is like, hey, come write about mm -hmm. it in your blog and also in give my blog. them and then content. I give them a whole bunch of videos and photography and stuff so so they can use it yep. for their content basically mm -hmm. they can put it in their content library and use it and then I also cover it on all my social media so oh, um, that's pretty cool you know, yeah and then I write about it and I put it in my newsletter and and so on and then after that I come home and I'm home for two and a half weeks and I go to Europe for like five weeks I'm doing I run two hiking tours for my readers basically in Ireland that I've designed. And so I run those two tours in Ireland and then I'm going to Croatia for a company that's sending me there to write about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. cool. Good for you. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, but it's been really fun because also, so for the, the capital routes, 
um, like I said, I consider that work. It is travel. It's bike travel. So not only, I mean, we haven't really talked about this too much, but I, I'm producing a docu-series on YouTube that is a short like documentary of each route, so, you know, somewhere around 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of what happened, the trials, the tribulations, you know, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, that's basically content that I'm creating for people to watch. It's a whole series. And then uh, also when I get to the capital cities, like for instance, I ended in Little Rock just last week and I contacted the Little Rock Tourism Board because that's what I'm used to doing all the time as a travel writer and told them what I was doing. And then they set me up for all kinds of stuff to see and do in Little Rock. And I stayed an extra two days there and, you know, covered that in social media. And I'll write about that and include that in some of the YouTube stuff. And yeah. Wow. Good for you. I think yeah. that's really cool. <laughs> Thank I you. I think that's really cool. I always kind of wondered how that whole travel blog thing worked. And it's like, yeah. do you just write a blog and then all these Google ads pop up on it? And that's how you well, get there's that piece too. Yeah. <laughs> Cause not every, you know, I don't have like tons of people banging down my door, sending me places, but I do have a lot. And then a lot of it also is ad revenue. You're right. Yeah. It's from ads Google ads on your blog. Or ads that I, you know, run in my newsletter for companies oh. and stuff like that. Huh, sure. So yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> um, most important social media to you. Hmm. I can tell you the one I love the most and yeah, so I'll, it's right now it's the most important is probably Instagram. Hmm. I just okay. like it. Do you, um, do you still use X? Uh, that's a really Twitter? good question. I just had someone... I just had, I have an assistant that helps me out with a bunch of social media stuff. And she just asked me, she's like, do you use X anymore? And I'm like, oh no, not really. Yeah. No, it's changed a lot. I mean, I was on it when it first started. Like, so I used it all the time and I had, had amassed quite a following on it, but mm -hmm. it's just the purpose of it has changed. And so, um, no, I don't really use it too much anymore. I'll put some stuff out there, but primarily it's like, so when I do one of these routes or when I go to Tahiti, I, I basically share it all live, um, not live, live, but I share it as you're day. doing it. Yeah. As yeah. I'm doing it in stories in Instagram and Facebook. Huh. So, um, and that's what people, and, and that has been really fun for the biking routes because people get really interested in like journeys from point A to point B. I mean, they're in it with me. They're like, oh my God, you know, I don't know if you're going to make this. What happened with the dogs today? Like, it's just. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They're they're following yeah. your story and there's suspense in your story. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I never know if I'm going to make it. Right, right. Yeah. So. Um, I'm not sure yeah. I understand. Uh, Siri's <laughs> asking me stuff. Um, <laughs> how many followers do you have on Instagram? On Instagram, about 16,000. Oh, wow. You are an influencer. I'm super yeah. proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Off the social media stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'll put links to your Instagram, uh, Facebook, yeah. and of course your blog on. Yeah. Um, and the, and the docu-series. And that's the docu-series for sure. If you really want to see what I'm talking about and, you know, kind of the first one that I did, which was really fun because the first one that I did was South Dakota. I finished South Dakota and I, that was kind of the official handoff with my dad. And so I stopped biking a mile from the Capitol and my mom and dad both came because they live in South Dakota and we, the three of us walked in together. And I, so it was a really kind of a fun and emotional handoff for me at least. And I think for my dad too. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure he's proud of you. And I'm sure he's excited that you're you're taking this on, especially knowing you were a 14 year old who hated it. Um, uh, and yeah, absolutely, I would recommend. I watched that, and uh, I would highly recommend. And I, I'll put a link to that in the show notes for sure, and share yeah. that. Um, a question that I meant to ask a thousand, um, I don't know, hours, minutes, days, years ago is: How far did your dad walk a day? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, when he was really like in a rhythm, he could walk anywhere from, hmm, I would say, you know, 22 to 28 miles a day. 
Wow. That's pretty impressive. If he, if he had good weather, you know, if yep. he had good weather, that was, a, that was always a big thing. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd say more on average, it was more like probably 15 to 18, something like that. And he did how many thousand miles? He did over 4,000. Oh, that's, I know. That's a good that's hike a right there. Yeah. That's it impressive. is a lot. Huh. That's um, very cool. Yeah. What's your next? It is cool. <laughs> it is cool. It is cool. Um, you just tell your 14 year old self that, hey, listen, this I is know. cool. I know. Pay attention to your dad. <laughs> Give him respect. I have, I have six nieces, no nephews, just six nieces, and they're all out of college now, but um, they didn't know anything about this. They oh, didn't really? know anything about what my dad did. Yeah, what their grandpa did. Uh, again, and I think so, it's an awesome way to honor what your dad yeah, started. I yeah. think that's super cool. And I have a couple of them that are like, oh, I want to join you, you know, and which would be awesome. I would love that. So yeah. that's, I hope, one day. What's your next leg? I have uh, two more that I have planned for sure this year. Maybe a third, we'll see, or not, maybe a fourth, we'll see. Um, I just finished this Texas to Little Rock, and now my next one will be in June, and it'll be Cheyenne, Wyoming to Lincoln, Nebraska, which I know most people would be like, oh, you know, that sounds horrible, but I'm actually really excited about it because I went to school in Nebraska. My parents grew up in Nebraska. I I understand Nebraska. Like, that's fine with me. Um, well, so that'll be fun. Western Nebraska is like gorgeous yeah. west, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you've got the sand hills, like, yeah. Sand I haven't been out there like the, either. I don't know, like the buttes and stuff. And, yeah, exactly. Um, what, Boot Hill? That's not much of a hill, but yeah. yeah just all, like, I feel like there's a lot of, of West history, U.S. West history. Maybe not all good, maybe not all stuff yeah. we're proud of, but... Um, uh, I, I think that'd be kind of a cool leg for yeah. sure. I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. I've got my logistics queen lined up. She's from South Dakota, so should be good. And then the other big one that I'm going to do, this one's not as long, but it's going to be freaking hard, is um, Santa Fe to Denver. Wow. So that's going to be mountain passes, a lot of them. And, and there's a part of me, I'm doing that one in the mid mid August probably and uh I'm doing that one later because I'm normally in my best shape at the end of the summer mm, right <laughs> I am my, this one that I just did I was not in shape for but I you know kind of got through it um but I'm hoping that I'll be in good enough shape to not even go like the most direct way which would be more on kind of the I25 corridor kind of up those foothills um I want to go through some of the big passes. Like I want to go up through like Una Vista, uh, Breckenridge, and then come down through Loveland Pass. That's my goal. Oh. I don't know if I can really do that or not, but Colorado does have like from Breckenridge, you can stay on trails all the way back into Denver. So it's all the way crazy. to Denver. Uh, I think you have to maybe get on the road for Loveland Pass, but then after that, yeah, there's trails. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, I think the trail ends in Keystone, and then you're on the road up Loveland yeah. Pass. And Loveland Pass yeah. is no joke, neither up I nor down. Know. I know. <laughs> so we'll see. I haven't decided on that route yet. Um, I just think it would be really pretty. It's my home state. We're not, well, it's the state where I live. Um you know, and once I get in, kind of, it, it'll be great. And I'll have a bunch of friends, I think, like, the other thing is, you know, I would love for people to join me. Anyone who wants to come and join, join. Um, but I should have, you know, some friends that'll ride with me on different parts of that and just be along. And, you know, I live, I can practically see the Colorado Capitol from my window. So I live about a mile or so from a mile and a half I mean, from you it, could so. honor your dad and just get out of your house right now and walk to it. Of course, you got four <laughs> feet of snow right now, but. Yeah. Um, uh, that's pretty cool. That'll be a neat. That'll be a neat trip. You yeah. mentioned uh, you would enjoy people joining you for all or part of a ride. How can people help? How can people be connected and involved? Um, wow, that's a great question. If they want to be involved, I mean, email me. 
Uh, that's the best way. And if they want to, you know, I have had a few people say like, oh, when you come to Tennessee, I really want to ride with you. Awesome. Um, and I kind of keep that. And as I plan the stuff out, I'll contact them. Um, the other way to kind of know what I'm going to be doing next or so on is sign up for my newsletter and you can easily respond to me on anything in that and write me. Um, um, yeah. And then, you know, my hope, I'm just kind of getting this, I mean, I've done six, I'm getting, just kind of getting it going. And my hope is that I do want to do something more, hmm, well, I, I I do want to do something where I give back more and that's been on my mind a lot. Um, I just haven't quite figured out how I want to do it. Uh, so I've kind of been working a little bit with adventure cycling association to kind of, you know, maybe think about like, oh, are there ways that I can use their trails and do some fundraising stuff for them? Or, um, I've, what I'd really like to do, and I just haven't figured out exactly how to do it is like the city in which I bike into the capital city in which I bike into, to you know raise some money or whatever for a local bike shop or the bike community there hmm. um but my goal in this is to you know if i had a kind of a bigger goal outside of me and my dad and my own self you know challenge it is to kind of bring awareness to bicycle safety and travel and stuff like that because like i said every time i get to a capital capital alive i'm happy yeah um, for sure and it is not easy to be out on those roads and drivers and drivers that don't know what to do or whatever. And so just, you know, from both standpoints, from the driving standpoint, as well as the cyclist standpoint, you know, how do you do the, how do you do road cycling? Um, so we'll see where that all lands me, but that's, that's kind of what's in my head to do something a little bit more around that stuff. Uh, and I feel like I have a, you know, I have a chance that I can do that because I do have, kind of an audience and I, you know, I'm always trying to grow that and that's kind of what the docu-series is about. And so, yeah. Huh. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Ottsworld.com. Yeah. Uh, what's your Instagram handle? It is at Ottsworld, O-T-T-S world. Ottsworld. Dig it. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, uh, docu-series is on YouTube and your mm -hmm. YouTube. Under Ottsworld. Ottsworld. Um, there's, I'm seeing a theme here. <laughs> it's a good thing that guy gave me that gift. Yeah, it was a going for sure. Away gift. For oh. sure. Uh, what a burden off your plate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I think it's cool that this is developing and building and maturing as you as you go. It's not a I have to have everything ready and then I go. Wow. It's a here's what we're gonna do and here's what we're gonna do tomorrow and then then mm -hmm. we figure out. The next leg and then we figure out the next leg yeah yeah and i do i that's one of the things i do like about it myself actually it is it's just kind of this big project that's evolving and it's been beyond my expectations fun and meditative and all those things like it just i really really enjoy it huh. and it's been the other really great part for me is stuff like this because as i said new to biking I'm new to the bike industry. And so learning about a whole new industry that you know nothing about is really kind of fun. I mean, it's terrifying. And I've ended up in tears lots just trying to figure out like clip in shoes or whatever, like you know, how to shift or yeah, yeah put the chain <laughs> yeah. back on when it falls off yeah. or fix a flat or like, I'm still not great at that stuff, but it's just, it's been really fun learning about you know, just different parts of this industry from media to company to brands to, you know, like Velarosa and so on and adventure cycling. And it just, yeah, it's been fun. I haven't learned something new, you know, as we get older, we seldom learn new things. Right. Yep. So it's, it's just, that part's been really fun. Huh. Cool. Well, listen, <laughs> best of luck, best of safety, tailwinds on every ride <laughs> and May you keep all of the momentum from the downhill to the nearly top of the next uphill, like five pedal strokes and you're over the top. Except Those maybe coming days. through the on Loveland Pass, that might be six or seven pedal strokes. <laughs> but I don't know. Coming down over Hoosier Pass is uh, pretty, that'll get you halfway up Loveland. It won't. <laughs> I'm totally kidding on that. 
<laughs> uh, you got Swan Mountain on there. I mean, that uh, that's not an easy trail around uh, Lake Dillon. I mean, no, we talk I, about Loveland Pass, but that Swan yeah. Mountain Road is something else too. Yes, so. it is really hard. And that's where I kind of go up and train because I can easily just drive up sure. there in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so in you're the familiar summer. with all those. Yeah. 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 What I haven't done is like Salida. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm going to go through Taos. Like there's just, there's that trip will be a doozy. Yeah. Well, listen, Sherry Ott, thanks for coming on Bike Talk with Dave. Again, been a pleasure. Thank you all. Wow, huh? I am super impressed with the life Sherry has chosen to lead and in the way in which she and her dad can connect through their Capital to Capital project. Be sure to follow the continued progress at otsworld.com and on Instagram at otsworld. Now, if you want to join the fun in any way, don't hesitate to reach out through either of those means and jump in however you're able. Speaking of state capitals, did you know that the original capital of Iowa was in Iowa City? Yep. For the first 10 years of Iowa statehood, from the end of 1846 until 1857, at that time when Iowa's governing body decided to move the capital to within two miles of the Raccoon Fork of the Des Moines River, now in Des Moines, Iowa. So now the original capital building the Iowa City one, stands at the center of the University of Iowa campus. Something else that has its home in Iowa City, besides a basketball player, is the Core Four. And this year they've got some great plans, including a $10,000 prize purse for the Stone Crusher 100 mile race, courtesy of their new title sponsor, River Products Company and it will be honoring Chris Lillig. So for more information on Core 4, their new title sponsor, as well as all the different race distances and registration, head on over to core4.bike and why not sign up today? Now I really appreciate you tuning in each week and I'd really love it if you'd rate and review this show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you want to support the show financially, and I appreciate it when you do. Just look for Bike Talk with Dave at buymeacoffee.com and drop a few coins in the cup. And be sure to check out the Bike Talk with Dave channel on YouTube. In the meantime, Dee and I are heading down to Sweetwater, Texas for the Rattlesnake Gravel Grind and to cash in on my bet with Emily Newsom. That bet was on the Iowa State TCU basketball game and the loser, that would be Emily, has to drape a rattlesnake around her neck. Yes. We've also got a wager between Justin McQuarrie and Joe Laverick on the race. Whoever loses has to do the same. So be sure and tune in with the Bike Talk with Dave Instagram page for photos this weekend. You can bet I will be posting them. Now I'll be bringing Mr. Microphone along too for some future podcast sweetness as well. Now, as for you, I hope you enjoy the warmer, longer days of spring. And remember that nothing compares with the simple pleasure of riding a bicycle. <laughs>